Do you guys have one of these at home? No, I actually needed to explain stuff. This is an original Rubik's Cube, which is much different from this GAN 13M Maglev. Yes, Maglev like the Japanese trains. This boy has a lot of exciting stuff. I mean, just look at this. What, what is all of this? But before we get to that, we're gonna travel together through the innovations of speed cubing and see how we got from this piece of trash to this work of art. I'm excited. The Rubik's Cube was invented in 1974 by our man and hero, Erno Rubik. And the overall mechanism of the puzzle has stayed pretty much the same. You have a core which determines what colors will be on each side of the cube. You have 12 edge pieces that have two colors and eight corner pieces that have three colors. The job of the core is to hold all the pieces together. And once fully assembled, ta-da, you have a working Rubik's Cube. Not a great one, but it works. The issue is when Erno Rubik designed the Rubik's Cube, he didn't expect stuff like this to ever happen. Suddenly, people started solving the cubes in unimaginable times, and speed cubing became a thing. But for this to be possible, the Rubik's Cube obviously needed improvements. And the first step in cubing innovation is just an overall better design of the cube. Why did a police car ruin this moment? The first improvement for the first speed cubes was an overall smoother design. You could find this, for example, with the OG Diane Guhong. What a beast. But smoother piece design wasn't everything. Bruh. So that's why every new iteration of a speed cube just improves the performance of it by experimenting with different types of pieces. As you can see, you have these grooves on these new cubes that keep everything in place. You have these rounded corners, which allows for corner cutting, which is this. Nowadays, you even have special textures on your cube pieces that allows for less friction, better loop distribution and stuff like that. But the overall design of a cube stays the same. You have a core that keeps the edge and corner pieces in place. But as the cubes were getting faster and faster, there was really one invention that brought control back to speed cubing. Let me show you what it is. You see this? Magnets. Now magnets make sure that the cube stays in its perfect cube shape and that every turn the cube aligns perfectly. This obviously helps a great deal with control of the cube. Now the cube you see right here originally wasn't magnetic. I actually put these little magnets inside of the cube myself. You have magnets in the edge pieces and you have magnets in the corner pieces. And together, they attract each other. Now there is no magnetic pull, but whenever you do a turn, bam, the cube snaps into place. But eventually we didn't have to insert these magnets ourselves. I remember buying my first magnetic speed cube from the cubicle, it was a Valk 3, and they magnetized it themselves. But I think that the GAN UM was the first factory set magnetic cube. But when the performances of these cubes started to hit their peak, cube manufacturers had to set their focus on something else. And that's when they started focusing on customizations of the puzzle. Now every cube we've talked about so far uses springs. Yes, these spring, no, 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 not really these springs. Can you see that boy right there? And these springs usually come with a screw. Before we're gonna take a look at the springs, let's start with the screw. If we tie it in the screw, you can see I cannot corner cut anymore, but on the other side with the normal tensions, I should be able to just normally corner cut. But the screw depth isn't the only thing you can change. Let's say I take out the springs of the cube and expand them. Man, what's with the focus? Jeez. So basically by pulling the spring, I've created a spring that is longer. Now, if I would compress both springs to the same level, there is more resistance on the spring to the right than on the left. The longer spring is on the white side and the normal spring on the blue side. Now, if I set both screws to the same setting, so basically the tightness of the cube, the corner cutting should be the same on both puzzles. The difference is that this spring is more compressed, thus the pieces are getting pushed more towards each other, so we have more resistance. So basically a more compressed spring results in a more controllable cube. Now the issue is that no one really has the time to take out all of the springs, pull them apart, make sure that they're equally in length, because if you mess up, then the spring is ruined, or just using different springs, because sometimes cubes were included different springs, so you can swap them out, have a play with them, but eventually, we had an industry standard and it is called a dual adjustment system. Now the Moyo GDS 3M was probably one of the first, if not the first cube to implement this. And it looks like this. It is basically a way to adjust the tightness and the spring compression without having to swap anything. So let's take a better look at this dual adjustment system that is in every centerpiece of a cube. If I start screwing this screw in, I'll just have less distance and basically a tighter cube. But the blue piece does something different. The blue piece is basically just a little container for the spring to sit in. 
But if we zoom in a bit, we can see that there's both teeth on the container and the placeholder in the center cap. And these teeth are there to be able to adjust the height of the container. And this will all make sense once we reassemble the cube, because once we set the right screw distance, we can now compress the spring by adjusting the height of the blue container. Screw height and compression. Dual adjustment. Now there's different types of the same system. Most of the systems require you to use a tool for both the screw height and the compression. But the newest Tornado V3 uses a lever that doesn't even require a tool. But with the customizations of the springs, there is an important other customization option that people needed because this is really pushing in my face, what the heck? Because for example, you buy the new GDS 3M it is an amazing cube, but the problem is it has very strong magnets. Now, some people really like this. They like the tactile feel of the cube, but some people prefer the lighter pool that you get on other cubes. Now, what do you do? Well, either you just buy multiple cubes and choose whichever is your preference, but alternatively, you have adjustable magnets. Adjustable magnets have come a long way and was seemingly not that easy to achieve. In 2018, the GAN 356X was released and with that, the first version of interchangeable magnets. The system required you to literally push out these tubes with magnets in them for each edge piece of the cube. Different tubes had different magnet strengths, which resulted in different magnetic settings. It worked, but you probably see that this isn't ideal. But then in 2019, the Yuxiao EDM had the world's first adjustable, non-interchangeable magnetic system. It had a lever in all the edges that changed the magnetic position so that by moving it further away from the corresponding corner magnet, you could adjust the magnetic pull. Now, you can still find similar systems in newer releases. For example, with the Tornado V3, you can twist each magnet in each edge to adjust the height and thus the magnetic pull. But because you have to do this for both magnets on all of the 12 edges, this required 24 adjustments. Which isn't great, especially since there is a way to adjust magnet strengths with just 8 adjustments. But before we get to that, we need to talk about another innovation. Now we get to the Japanese train stuff. Maglev. So think about what a spring does for a second. You push it together and it exerts a force back called resistance. Now two repelling magnets can achieve the same thing. When you try to push them together, they exert resistance. And that is exactly what you can find in the newest speed cubes. A spring replaced by two repelling magnets. And if you're wondering, the compression stuff still works since the more the magnets are being pushed together, the more resistance there is. The first maglev cube was released in 2021 and was the RS3M maglev. The problem was that they used the exact same mechanism of their spring cube but just inserted magnets and the cube was a bit too fast for most because you have to think for a second what is the benefit of using maglev versus a normal spring well first of all you cannot have spring noise in a maglev cube that is a big win and the second thing is you have less friction because when you put two repelling magnets together and twist there is no friction at all so maglev does add speed but at a great cost. And to tackle this, we just need an extra layer of control. And that's when we get to the next innovation. I don't know why I made that face, but... <laughs> Core magnets. There's been a lot of experimentation of adding an extra layer of magnets in cubes. The first one was probably the Volk 3 Elite with extra magnets in the center pieces. It, it was cool, but it didn't really add anything. And later you could find weird magnets in the feet of edge pieces. But the eventual winner had to be GAN's core magnets released in 2020. For these magnets in the core to work, you need edges with magnets in the stem. Whee! You can see that when you turn, there is a long magnetic pull between the core and the corner pieces. Now comparing this to the normal edge corner magnets which only pull when they're in direct contact, core corner magnets have a longer radius of magnetic pulling. Is, is that correct scientific language? So combining the corner edge magnets with the corner core magnets and the magnets that replace the spring, you have a cube with 88 magnets. You can find these magnets in most of the newest flagship cubes. And the best part of all is that GAN found a way to adjust the magnet strength using the magnets in the stem of the corners. So you only need 8 adjustments instead of 24. So now we know a whole lot more about all the features of a modern speed cube, but there's one really important thing that I haven't covered, and that's on the outside of the cube. What's, what's again with the stupid faces? So back in the day, all cubes we got used to have stickers. It was even a WCA regulation that a cube acquired stickers. But even while that regulation existed, a lot of people preferred stickerless cubes, with the main benefit being that the stickers just don't peel and get damaged. Bruh. But when we're talking about stickerless cubes, there's three different versions. There used to be just two where you had a matte finish like this, or a glossy finish. Now the glossy finish usually gives a bit more grip, but the matte finish is better at performing when you have sweaty hands. But since very recently, we have a third alternative. 
UV coating. In other words, super shiny. Now, I do not know how UV coating works. If I look up what UV is, it stands for ultraviolet. How, how can you coat a cube with light? Yeah, I guess it does give you more grip. But the question now is, what is next? And actually, they answered that in 2018 with this special cube. Because this cube connects to your phone. And I believe... Why is my flashlight on? That's so random. And I believe that the next generation of speed cubes will be those of smart cubes. But that's a video for another time. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you want to buy any speed cubes, just go to thecubicall.com and use discount code CUBED for a huge discount. And I'll see you in the next video. Ciao, guys.